As you've been hearing, it sent shockwaves through the world of football and provoked uproar around the globe. And now it sealed the fate for Luis Rubiales, who's resigned as president of the Spanish Football Federation. Earlier tonight, in a world-exclusive interview with T Talk TV's Piers Morgan, the disgraced football boss refused to apologise to the player on the receiving end of that controversial kiss, Jenny Hermoso. You won't say sorry to Jenny personally, and I'm curious why you're reluctant to do that. Putting aside any of the, of the possible prosecution and so on, I'm just curious why you would say, yes, I made a mistake, yes, I shouldn't have done it, I wouldn't do it again if I had my time, but you won't go that one step further and just say, Jenny, I'm sorry. So what we had is a spontaneous act, a mutual act, an act that both consented to, which was driven by the emotion of the moment, the happiness. So I maintain that that is the truth of what happened. Well, what are you making of all of this? That kiss, of course, wasn't the only thing Morgan took up with Rubiales. During a tense 90-minute interview, he pressed the shamed Spanish football chief about his actions at the end of the Women's World Cup final, where he grabbed his crotch and made an obscene gesture after the final whistle. And you very provocatively grabbed your crotch in a way that, frankly, I watched that and thought that just with members of the royal family sitting there and a young 16-year-old girl, again, was completely inappropriate. Este gesto for this, I am truly ashamed, more from an internal perspective than anything else. There are no excuses. In Spain, with guys as well as women, there is an expression which would probably translate to something like, oh, my genitals, or something to that respect. Well, that's OK, then. Well, joining me now is former Lionesses player and TalkSport commentator Leanne Sanderson. Uh, Leanne, always good to see you. Um, well, he's resigned. Is that it? Does that draw a line under the issue, put the whole thing to bed? Well, first of all, good evening, Ian. Thanks for having me on your show. Um, no, I don't think it does. I think, you know, I've been asked to talk about this a lot over the last three weeks since the World Cup final happened. And, you know, I've tweeted about it and I've spoken about it, but not that much. And now that he's finally done this interview, I feel like now is the time for everybody to speak. I think... I still don't think it's good enough. You know, there's a few things. We could sit, sit here all night and go through the whole interview, which we won't do. But the things that stood out for me is a lack of apology. He said that Jenny Hermoso consented to it. I mean, you know, he's also spoken about a lip reader being able to say, can I kiss you? I mean, what is this? You know, we're in 2023. And the fact that he started the interview by saying he did the interview with Piers because Piers has over a million followers. I just think this guy is delusional. You know, and I think the fact that the whole world, not only the women's football world, but the world has come together in the last three weeks to try and get rid of this guy. And unfortunately, it beggars belief what this guy probably does behind closed doors with regards to what he's doing in public, grabbing his crotch, kissing Jenny Hermoso. She didn't have any choice about that. You know, there wasn't much choice in this. You can see it. So I think he's been pushed, obviously forced to... To, to leave, he's not been given the opportunity really to say, so for someone to say, you need to go. I mean, look at these pictures. But I think the way that the world has come together and the way the football world has come together, I think it's been brilliant. You know, he spoke about his daughters in the interview and his mother. I mean, I completely empathise with them, but maybe he shouldn't act like that then. And he wouldn't have to, you know, say, that he put my family through this. How much has Jenny Hermoso had to go through in the last three weeks? How much has her family had to go through? So I still don't think it's good enough, but I think it will draw a line under it. And, you know, Jorge Vilda, the coach of Spain, has gone as well, which I think needed to happen. And this has been going on for a really long time. What do you make of the reaction, though, to this? I mean, it, you've alluded to it there, the fact that there's been... Uh, you know, on balance, I mean, clearly there are people who support him and his position, but uh, perhaps many more who uh, have supported the position that you're advancing here, Leanne. Uh, would that have happened in your time as a player, do you think? Um, you mean, like, people coming together or people yeah, speaking do out? Yeah, do you sense that, you know... I mean, it wasn't exactly a million years ago, but you take the point, you know, it wasn't that long ago when something like that might not have been taken quite so seriously. 
I agree with you. And I think the fact that there's more eyes on the women's game now, we've seen in the league last year in America, there was a lot of coaches that got fired due to not being able to act in the appropriate way. And thankfully, we're in 2023 and these things can't happen. So I think the fact that he's done this in public and he's seen, I don't think he realised. And I played in Spain myself, Ian. You know, I played there a number of years ago. And I think there's a lot of this misogyny there. The men are still the ones that, you know, you have to shake the coach's hand before you step onto the field of play. And I think with these Spanish players, when you saw them celebrating after on the bus, because he's alluded to that as well, almost saying that they didn't have a problem with it. No, I don't think, I think they're so desensitised to bad behaviour, like a lot of us had become in the women's game, that they didn't even realise what he did was wrong until they probably went on social media, saw the uproar of when Luis Rubiales kissed Jenny Hermoso on the lips and saw that that's not OK. That's not OK behaviour. You know, Piers even said just, himself. Just to flip it, though, Leanne, what, what about his um, explanation, if you like, that this is, you know, it was a celebration. It's what he would do to his daughter, he said. The emotion of the moment. Yeah, the emotion of the moment does get you, but Jenny Hermoso is not his daughter. She's a player that plays for the Spanish Federation and that's completely inappropriate to grab her face live in front of the world to see. And the fact that he didn't think there was going to be repercussions is another, another problem in itself. But grabbing his crotch in front of the royal family in that area, Piers brought it up himself. That's not acceptable. So I think these things, these type of men have existed in the women's game for a really long time. And thankfully, I think we're getting rid of people like this. It's taken, you know, three and a half weeks. And obviously he spoke at a seminar about three or four days later. And all of those men that were clapping him in that seminar, they need to go as well. You know, it was embarrassing. And it's all very well saying if it was his daughter. It's Jenny Amoso is not his daughter. Yeah. She's a player that plays for the Spanish Federation. And that was completely inappropriate. And for those people that say, you know, oh, you know, the emotions got the better of him. She didn't have a choice in that. And that's a problem in itself. And it's something that women have been fighting for a really long time now in the workplace and even away from football. Uh, you should, of course, remember, Leanne, that there is an explanation for the crotch grabbing. It's a Spanish tradition called, well, grab my genitals or something, he said, which uh, I've met a few Spaniards in my time. I've never heard anyone um, impart that as a tradition. No, I lived in Spain for two years and I've never seen anybody do that. So completely inappropriate. And now I think I think the best thing he could have ever done is apologise publicly and to Jenny Hermosa. I mean, I work in America as well, in the American League. There's so many fans that have banners behind the goal. It's completely consumed and it's overshadowed what these amazing women have done by winning the World Cup. You know, it's heroic what they That's did winning the, the yeah. World Cup. Yeah, and I, I think it's, it's that, isn't it? That the, 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 we've debated this. We've debated this for the last few weeks and, and not the uh, magnificent win. Uh, sadly, against England, but that's another story, I guess. Listen, Leanne, um, always good to speak. Thank you, Leanne Sanderson, former Lioness herself. Uh, let's bring in Tuesday night's first edition panel for some reaction. With us tonight, Labour MP for Birmingham, Yardley, Jess Phillips, and Conservative MP for Stoke and Trent North, Jonathan Gallis. I can almost see, without even looking at you guys, I could feel the body language on that story. I could see that there was clearly division in how you guys were interpreting this. I could see you nodding away to what Leanne was saying, Jess. Yeah, I mean, I really like the cut of Leanne's jib. Uh, she's an excellent human. Um, I, I think she's the, the absolute crux of it, and I don't know whether we do disagree, but the absolute crux of it is the fundamental. He should just say sorry because she said she didn't like would that it. Have been, would, that have, would that have made a difference? Would he not have had to have resigned then? Because he, uh, he could have no, said... No, I think that he was... I think that the, the series of events <clears throat> meant that it made it untenable, partially because he has become mm. the story. Not, as somebody who works for the Spanish FA, I, I, as you alluded to at the end of the interview... The br I mean, what an amazing thing for those Spanish women and the Spanish people must have been out on the streets. And it's it's uh, whether it has in Spain or not, I can't speak to, but it has all just become about this mm. man. You know, this is a brilliant victory for women. This is the women's game advancing. And it's all become about this man's behaviour, and that's a real shame. And it is, as Piers Morgan, Jonathan, said in that interview, you know, he's, he's, he's flown over to the UK specifically for this sit-down with Piers. And he's resigned. He's done that. He's made a lot of other comments as well. But he hasn't said sorry. He, he, for whatever reason, you'd think if he's gone that far, he's lost his job, arguably his career, but he won't apologise. This is what blows my mind, ultimately, and I completely agree with Jess. Look, what was so difficult about speaking to Jenny Hermoso mm -hmm. privately and saying to her, I'm really sorry, I overstepped the mark. Even if it was, I got caught up in the moment, but I still shouldn't have done it. It is, and I'm really sorry for that. And I reckon that Jenny Amosa could have come out and said he's fine. taken responsibility yeah. and accountable for his actions, and he then puts out a public statement saying sorry, and this story 
is moved on within 24 hours. And we're talking, as Jess rightly said, about how it great it is to finally see women's football yeah. getting the attention that it rightfully deserves. Talking about the skill, talking about the fans and the millions watching around the world, as well as the big boost it's done to the English sure. game with the fact England making the final, obviously having already won the Euros. I just think, I just, I don't get the pig-headedness of it. And to, the crotch thing was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. It's I a love... Spanish tradition, Jonathan. I know, Ian, look, Ian, I'm a massive football fan. I've brought up a Fulham <laughs> fan. I go down Port Vale in Stoke-on-Trent. I have never once seen a single male or female fan grab their that. crotch in celebration. The guy has clearly got a bit of a screw loose. He said, he, I, he said, I'm slightly paraphrasing here, he said, it's a thing we do in Spain. It's like, oh, would you look at that? Well, look, grab my genitals. That seems to be how he was suggesting... <laughs> It's. Uh, <laughs> I I lived in Spain for a while, yeah. and I, I I'd never heard this. And I, it's I'm, a very Catholic country. I, what is, I really, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I'm, I'm quite surprised to hear that. Uh, I'm not, it's common parlance. Yeah, I'm not sure that the priest at St Mary's in Malaga would be uh, <laughs> telling you that one. Time for confession, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Quite honestly, I actually I think he possibly made that bit up, frankly, in the interview. But it is extraordinary. Do you think it's the collective nature of all of this, then, Jess? If I, if it was just this one moment, and he could have got carried away, celebration, didn't happen with any of the other players. He could, and, and as you say, he said, I'm really sorry. Yeah, look, That could have drawn a I line. I do think that it... there is a collective, and because it wasn't dealt with swiftly, what is brilliant about that collective now is the sort of like, well, there's just stuff we won't put up with anymore, which, um, as uh, Leanne was saying, for years the women's game will have put up with, and we've seen it in other sports as well, whether it's gymnastics, like stuff like that the women have to tolerate. And it's mm. just sort of like, do you know what? We're just not going to tolerate it. And it goes from, you know, when I deal with these sorts of cases all the time and you have to be like, understand that there is the severe end and, uh, and the what seems less severe end. But if you tolerate, even if you tolerate just the stuff that seems like banter, that's where you end up with the women just having to learn to tolerate constant, yeah. like, bothering. And so I think the collective action is, is shows a change time yeah. uh, in the women's game, in football more generally. Uh, and perhaps, you know, this, just to go back to this lack of apology thing, which, you know, I, I just find extraordinary that he flew over here for an interview after all that has been said. He's gone from his post, as we said, you know, arguably he won't be back in the world of football anytime soon. And that one moment he could have apologised, the sort of the, the vainglorious nature, if you like, the vanity of somebody at that level, is that what's at play here? I don't know if he's making some weird pitch to try and become some sort of celebrity to get on Spain's version of Big Brother or I'm a celebrity to get me out of here, as, you know, to be the villain and hopefully maybe in his idea become the good guy or redeemed character. But I think he's just made a bit of a prat of himself. And to yeah. confess that I've come to do an interview because of how many followers you've got on social media... I mean, it just tells you everything you need to know about this bloke. Yeah. His ego is blown out of proportion. Okay. He clearly doesn't actually care or reflect. I bet if it was his daughter that was yeah. in that situation, as a it. father and as the father of myself of a daughter, I bet I'd have a very different reaction. Yeah. I sense you're probably right.